Sciatic nerve of the external rotators. It's probably the most common place that the sciatic nerve gets entrapped outside of the low back and lumbar spine, going all the way down to the foot. Butt pain is extremely common. The sciatic nerve is one of the most common entrapment sites for the sciatic nerve, so this is a super big deal. From a location perspective, people might have symptoms right where the sciatic nerve is located, but it could also be going down the posterior thigh. This is a very common place that people would have location of symptoms if this spot is entrapped. Posterior knee, back of the calf, front of the shin, top of the foot, bottom of the foot, that could all be a sciatic nerve entrapment right here. The lower it goes below the knee, the more likely the entrapment site is gonna be in the hamstring and the posterior knee or following that location of symptoms. Or you could have a double crush or a triple crush where you have multiple entrapment sites throughout the course of the sciatic nerve going into the lumbar spine. From a provocative standpoint though, they won't be able to stretch their hamstrings. So they'll come down here. If they get this far, this is usually a disc problem. If it's super, super restricted, they can't go far, it's usually a disc problem and they'll usually be guarding and it'll be really slow. However, if they're getting further than that and they're in this range and they feel an increase in their pain and their symptoms, that indicates that it will more likely be a sciatic nerve entrapment. If they have really bad butt pain and they can get all the way down and nothing increases their symptoms, I'm not thinking that the sciatic nerve at the external rotators is the entrapment site. So starting to connect the dots with the location and the other history points, the provocative, will allow you to know where to focus so that when you're fixing somebody in chronic pain and you can do 15 minute visits, you're just going from tissue to tissue to tissue, you're efficient with your time, and you're, if you make a guess, you're getting the treatment right on the first guess so that you can clean up whatever tissues you want, two or three tissues in that visit, send them on their way, charge $300 per visit, and then just do that for 20 patients a day. So that's the goal, and that's why we're going over this stuff. Really quickly, here's a quick diagram of the pelvis, the sciatic nerve is right there and it comes out from underneath the performance, piriformis. It's behind the greater trochanter and it's just medial to the ish tube, the sit bone right there. So I'm gonna show you how we find it. Greater trochanter, back of the greater trochanter, space. Here's the sciatic nerve. If you're just learning how to do this, I highly recommend you start with the sciatic nerve. The reason why the sciatic nerve is as thick as my pinky. It's basically the biggest nerve in the entire body. You may have some trouble feeling it, or if they have hypertonicity or knots in the area, you're, you're not going to know that you're on it because it's going to be confusing and you haven't done this before. So if I put my finger here, can I tell that there's something underneath my finger here that's not right there? I'm trying to feel this dense noodle right in this spot. This is how thick it is. and it comes down this way. Piriformis is right here. That is how thick it is. It's underneath glute max. So I'm pushing through slowly glute max and I'm waiting until I feel this dense noodle. If you're new, you're just gonna have to take it really slow and feel very slowly and wiggle and see if I can feel this noodle that is right in that spot. Cause if I'm right here, I'm not feeling a dense noodle. She has some hypertonicity, the, the external rotators deep to glute max have some extra tone in them like you're contracting a little bit. But this is not the nerve, this is. You need to be able to feel the nerve and trust that you're on the nerve to be able to tell if it's swollen or if it's entrapped or not. Once you find out that this is the nerve and you think that the sciatic nerve might have an entrapment in this area, you're gonna, you're gonna feel for adhesion. So you're gonna take your finger and then you're gonna bow it. Usually I use both hands, I'll go like this or my piezoform over my thumb, but for just help you, I'm sinking my finger in at this angle so I don't pull skin. I'm not going straight down, I'm not going horizontal. I'm going at this angle. Can you get this angle, Greg? This angle, perpendicular to the tissue. So I'm going perpendicular to the skin, then perpendicular to the nerve. So I'm sinking in down this way, now I'm taking a bow this way into the nerve. Right now I don't like that. I don't know if it's adhesive or irritated but I'm gonna keep coming up. 
just around this nerve and I'm pushing it down. So she's got a bunch of spots that are adhesed and glued down. So th I could actually feel the dense, gluey, fibrousness of the adhesion in this spot. Sometimes you'll actually feel like a little marble that feels like glue or stuckness. If you feel that, awesome. You're feeling an adhesion. I don't always feel that. But the more sensitive your hands get, the more likely you'll be able to feel that. Like this is a physical 3D marble sized adhesion around her sciatic nerve. And a lot of this just isn't bowing. Where I would probably start would be right here. I know this is not bowing. I know this is an entrapment site. This will 100% overload her sciatic nerve and cause issues because you stretch any nerve more than 7% it loses blood flow and your body will protect that from happening by keeping muscles tight around it so it keeps things short. So we're going to treat this. If you don't have an assistant, you're just going to tell your patient to keep this leg straight and then they're just going to bring it up. And that's how you're going to get started. If you do have an assistant, you're going to have them get ready to move the leg. I'm going to take my depth, same way that I just bowed. I'm going to go in like this and then I'm going to take a tension set into the nerve in the direction it doesn't want to go so that the nerve has to slide around the fulcrum point of my finger. So my depth is going to be like this and my tension set, if the nerve's going like this, I'm going to take a tension set like that until I feel a lot of pushback. I want the nerve pushing back against my finger. And I want the shortest distance for that pushback. So here's my depth. And to get tension set on her, instead of going this way, I'm actually going deep. I'm going in like this, because that's where I feel it push back a lot. Go ahead, James. As soon as James starts moving, enormous tension underneath my finger, because this adhesion's really bad. And now I'm fighting it with my body. I'm planked out my right toes. I'm pushing off my right toes. And I'm leaning my body weight to the left towards the door right in front of me that way. My right shoulder and elbow are isometric. My tr right tricep is activated. Good, come on back. And that's how I use my body weight so I don't crush my thumbs. Because people ask us all the time, are your thumbs exhausted and fatigued? No. When you do five to 10 treatment passes per visit and you use your body weight, my hands feel better in 14 years of practice than they felt in a really long time. Because about seven years ago, I was thinking about quitting practice because my hands were so smoked. So right from doing that, this is already bowing easier. And that's what one good treatment pass will do. So now right underneath the performance, I'm gonna do one more. So I'm taking my depth at this angle here. I'm right next to the nerve. Now I'm pushing down into the nerve. Go ahead, James. There's my tension set. Enormous pulling under my finger right now. She, this is severe adhesion for her. That's how I would grade it with my assistant. And now I'm pushing and fighting into that nerve so that I feel tension. I'm not sliding on the skin. I'm just tearing the adhesion under my finger. Good. And then I, as always, I recheck in that spot and this is much softer. And even the spots that are lower that weren't bowing are now bowing better. How does this feel to you? It's definitely less sensitive. Less sensitive. Mm -hmm. So if you do a good treatment pass and you actually break down adhesion, the patient will say it is less sensitive and less sore. That's a good sign that you know it's working. If they are not less sensitive or less sore, you may have removed the adhesion, but it's more likely that you miss something. Go ahead. What happens if like you do a pass and you notice like the tissue might be more irritated or it might present itself more hypertensity? So that's that's my point is you could, when you're first starting out, you may have removed the adhesion, but if you did, if you did too many passes or if you irritated the healthy tissue at the same time, you won't know if it's less, if you got the adhesion because they're going to say it's not as, it's not less sensitive. So you're going to have to wait till the next time you see the patient to see if they're actually better when their body recovers from the treatment dosage that you just did. But after you do a few passes, you're going to have the patient stand up and you're going to do the exact same test that you use that provoked their symptoms in the first place. So it could be either standing lumbar pelvic flexion, we call it SLPF in adhesion release methods, or the straight leg raise in, in SLR. Find your back for me, Casey. We didn't do this before, but you're gonna get your inclinometer right here, and then you're just gonna measure 
to see what this range of motion is compared to before. Now, I didn't do this with Casey, but let's say that she was 70 degrees and now that she's 80 degrees and she says her symptoms went down from a 6 out of 10 to a 2 out of 10. You know the treatment worked, you removed adhesion, and that's likely going to affect her life when it comes to the chronic butt pain or chronic sciatica symptoms that she was having. I hope this is helpful. We're starting to create more content and videos for different locations that people have chronic symptoms and giving you a little bit more data or information. As far as adhesion release methods goes with our providers, we ask them not to skip steps from their history, from their exam, figuring out palpation and what tissue is a high priority and has a lot of adhesion when you do treatment and when you get started in the first visit. We are skipping steps right now, which is okay because a lot of people are seeing our treatments on Instagram or YouTube and they're doing protocols anyway, not doing any history or exam taking and they're telling us what they're getting results. So we're just trying to get you a little bit more results with a little bit more data information, a little bit more stuff about the history, the exam tests, the provocative tests. And when it comes to adhesion based treatment, you should be getting real time results every single visit. Um, Sometimes if people have a horribly overloaded disc and it's not recovering well, it might take four, five visits, eight visits to get them better. But 99% of your patients should be responding every single visit, either on the test or how the tissue feels or in their range of motion. So that is the standard. The standard is you make changes every single visit and their symptoms get better. Um, that's important to just hold yourself to that standard and that will allow you to know what you're looking for when you're treating these adhesions and you're rechecking those tests or provocative tests. So have fun with this with your chronic butt pain sciatica patients. Please leave a comment or DM us on Instagram and let us know how this goes. If it works for you, it doesn't work for you, what you could be doing better. We're creating these videos so that we can help you get better results with your chronic butt pain sciatica patients. And I just wanna know if this stuff's working. And if it's working, then we're gonna create a lot more videos for you so that you can get better results. If you raise your rates, better quality of life for you, your staff, your family. And if you want, you can take the free five-day sciatica challenge at www.adhesionreleasemethods.com slash free. And then I go into more of this in depth on in that challenge. And go get them.